Dzień dobry. Do I say it correctly? I had a beer last night, so I, I even practice. Oh, I, I, the pressure. Um, Mój polski nigdy dobre. Yeah. Oh, you're such a great audience. So cheap, so hey. Actually, I will give away some prizes for some good questions also. So it's a win-win situation. So I will give a talk about uh, prototyping your Android application, but in fact, it could be a iOS application as well. It's, it's the same principles. And I would like to discuss basically what a prototype is, why you should make a prototype, of course, who is responsible or who should make a prototype, and something on how uh, well-known methods could be to creating your prototype. And I don't like talking about myself, so we'll start by uh, asking you some questions. And because they said Polish people are very modest, I will do it by hand. So I want to show, I want to see some hands who's ever created an Android application. You're my biggest fans. And some iOS applications start using Android. Uh, who actually has done some kind of prototyping? Okay, that's cool. That's cool. Why are you in, in my talk then? Well, uh, so a lot of... Are there any uh, user experience guys, some designers? You rock. We'll get the discussion afterwards because my present that it's good. So. Actually, you need my help. If somebody can take a picture, because I always wanted to be on the big screen, so now I can say to my wife, I'm, I'm a movie star, I'm, I've been on theater, so please take a photo, do it on Twitter, and you make me a really happy man, and my wife even better, I hope. So let me introduce myself. My name is Wiebe Elzinga, and yes, it's a difficult name, because it's the... <laughs> Um, it's a Dutch name. I'm from Holland, the Netherlands, and um, basically I'm a, I'm a... Actually, I have multiple job titles, but I am a senior developer. I do something with user experience. I run a team, or I help to try to run the team, and I'm a co-organizer of the GDG Dutch Android user group. And we try to elevate the, the knowledge of a Google, uh, a, a Android developer in the Netherlands. So we're supplying uh, once every month a meetup where people can talk and share their knowledge. Basically a mini conference every month. And for me, I, I, I do for free. I get some cool stuff from Google. So that's, that's, I've got a good job. Well, let's get back to my talk. First, we have to ask ourselves what a prototype is. And it sounds like an easy question, but actually um, it took me about a year to finally get a good definition of what a prototype uh, is. So a prototype should be an early version of an idea. Even more specific, it should be a testable one. I will explain the testable part later. Um, so you have an ID and you want to visualize that ID into a product, basically your Android or iOS application. And to test the definition, it's probably good to, show, to, to give you some examples. By the way, I'm sorry for the cameraman, I will do a lot of, to a lot of, the, a lot of walking. So who knows what these are? You can shout, you don't have to put a, come on. Segways. Oh, you all won prizes. Okay. Um, these weren't prototypes. When they were introduced, it was a new way of transport. You lean forward and you go forward. Basically, every normal person understands the way of transport, but it was already a finished product. So it wasn't really a prototype. And this guy. Well, I don't have to explain what this kind of, what, what this, uh, this device is. And let's face it, it was a breakthrough in the mobile world. Actually, it was a good phone. 
But when it came out, it already was mass produced. We just needed to buy one and that's, and that's it. So again, it wasn't a prototype. And it, and this. Actually, you can buy this, it's $5, and you can protect your face when you're eating noodles. <laughs> How handy is that? But it isn't a prototype. Actually, it's, it's <coughs> almost a prototype, but it isn't. So let me give you an example of what a prototype is. Let me introduce Pranav. Pranav, um, in late 2000, I guess, uh, he was sitting at home and he was watching a movie and there was some cool technique showing inside the movie. And he said, hmm, maybe I will try to recreate it, uh, but I don't have any big budget. I just want to play with it. So he went to Radio Shack, he bought a, uh, a couple of stuff and he tried to figure out what's the best way to create that technique. Anybody know the movie? Minority Report, yeah. Actually, they're in their final phase of production. Uh, it's not with a, a, a small projector, but it's actually with a cool shirt and it projects and it's really cool. But this shows you a, a cheap and easy way of visualizing the idea you've got without actually have to do two years of investigation and just go ahead and try it. And also, do you know what prototype this is? No, it is a radio, but actually... IPod. Yeah! <laughs> it's the first iPod. Oh man, the, the head on that guy. Well, and I don't have to explain what this is. Yeah, Google Glass. It is awesome, but before it became awesome, it really stopped. But they try a couple of times, and it's still, it's still in, it, you can buy it if you have a lot of money, but it still feels a little bit like a prototype. Well, now we know what a prototype is. So this raises the question, why, why should we make prototype? What's the benefit? Well, if you create a prototype, it should answer some basic questions. Is the ID I've got that is visualized by the prototype, well thought out. Am I missing something? Maybe I see a uh, login mechanism inside my application and I'm thinking, mm, maybe if I turn some, some additional screens on or I will throw away a button, it would be easier. So it should answer some basic questions or maybe raise new ones. Also, it's a good way to uh, compare alternatives. You don't have to be, uh, uh, write a application and when a customer comes and says, it's shitty, it, this, it isn't what I, I meant. You can throw away or even compare different kind of implementations. So basically using a button or using a sliding menu. I find this awesome. Can you imagine navigating? And it's, it's a way of Google Maps, but completely different. Well, and using prototypes is, um, if you do fail, if you do create an application that the user doesn't want, you don't have to spend the big bucks in order to find out. It's really expensive if you are finished creating your product and it isn't what you expected. By the way, this is at my home. This is really a secure park because I can just drive around it. It will cost you, two, it, it costs 250 thousand euros to replace a new one and somebody lost its job I guess so these are some good examples of, of the real world but we're mobile guys and girls yeah you're all I, do I need to explain do I really want to share my location with sex offenders and if they use a prototype they uh, they probably will know that it's maybe a different text you need to to supply Actually, what they did, they just renamed the application. And but these are, these are well known. And I thought, what's a good Polish application? What's this Polish application called? Yeah, yeah. Oh, you all use it, right? Yeah. Is there the builder of this application in the room? 
I'm not offending, I'm not bashing. Actually, it is sort of a good application. Uh, it's sometimes slow, but there are some quirks out there. So, what do you think happens if I press the back button? What do you normally expect when you, do the, uh, you open an application and you press back? You go out of the application. I'm not stupid, I go back because I want out of the application. Why do I get a short notification that I needed to press back two times? Am I stupid? Don't I know what, am I that of a user that I don't know if I go back, I go, I exit the application? And if we create a prototype, and uh, even better, a clickable one, we know these kinds of notifications aren't really good user experience. Everybody's still quiet. So basically, to sum up... May I interrupt you? Yeah. Actually, I know the guy who designed it. Yeah. Really? <coughs> yeah, but now you interrupt the flow because if you do want to get out of the application, you and and actually there's a bug in it also because if you press and you go to a different screen, you go. Back, back, you go out of the application. No. But it's, it, it's good. Maybe I, I was too hesitated. But for me, as a, a, a uh, user designer, and, and, and I'm, I'm a consumer, for me, it's really annoying pressing the, the two buttons. So go back. Basically, your prototype should visualize your ideas, which you can share with your stakeholders, friends, your mother, your wife, customers, whoever you like. Well. And actually, you got to fake it until you make it. Who's this? Come on. Steve Urkel. And why was he so important? He was the first television series televised nerd. Oh, we're such proud of, of, of Steve Urkel. And he's now really famous and a lot of money and doing drugs. Um, <laughs> yeah. So I didn't have this slide in um, prior to the talk I did in Berlin. But somebody came up with the question, who actually is responsible for creating the prototype? Because I had a discussion with a graphical designer and she said, well, because it's my expertise, I'm responsible. And the developer says, oh, wait a minute, but I'm making the application. If you create something really awesome to see but terrible to make, I can't do that. So who actually is responsible for creating a prototype? Well, in the normal world, there's an interaction designer and an official designer. Uh, if there's a small budget, this is the same person. But basically, it's the expert that knows a little bit about the human interaction uh, with an application. So. In the normal way, she, is, she or he is responsible for creating the prototype. But actually, there are some other people that might be interested in helping you creating that, uh, that prototype. Because if you create an awesome, awesome design, and the designer says, well, that's not typically a way an application or an Android application would be used, uh, then either the interaction designer is not doing their job, or there's a good discussion. Uh, I don't want to say that the application should be bound by the design patterns a platform uh, should be using, but users are used to commonalities. So use the navigation bar that they're used to it. So don't create your own, even though probably will look good. Try to to choose best the both of best worlds. And actually, the consumer has also a big part in it because he pays for it. And it's our jobs not to listen to customers and create our own applications and make it even cooler that the customer is happy. But that's my opinion. Well, <coughs> I, 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 uh, I'm, I hope you are all convinced about using prototypes. 
But what makes a prototype actually a good prototype? Because I can sketch something on paper and my customer says, oh, I don't, don't have the, the money and the time to do a complete design process, like a discussion I did two days ago with somebody. Well, a prototype should be, basically there, there are only four steps. I'm still, it's not rocket science, it should be quick and, and cheap to make. I don't want to spend a lot of money creating my prototype because then actually I can just create my application. It should be minimal, don't spend like two months creating your prototype with an application that can be built in a week. And for me it's important to make it testable because the user experience, the user should experience the application. And showing you just a piece of paper doesn't get you the experience a clickable prototype can be. But before we start, what's his name again? Tosk? Tosk. Yeah. Tosk. Is he a nice guy? No. Uh, is it se it's his second term, right? Yeah. yeah. So he's not doing anything anymore. <laughs> Yeah, I just want to explain a little bit about the different kind of prototypes. There, there are two different kinds. You have the experimental way. Basically, you have no goal to achieve. You're just free formatting. You go into a room and you go nuts and crazy and you think, what am I doing here? And you create something awesome. But what I'm used to is the more tactical prototype, which you uh, have an ID or you want a service or you want a, a need for an application and you're trying to achieve by way of prototyping to create that application or the visual ID. Again, uh, also it's important to know in which stage of the development process you should be using prototypes. And either we can shout or I can walk from here to there and you have to say stop where you think it should be used and I'm scared of the stage. So you just shout stop when you say stop. Here? Back? Even here? Oh, you would just want to... F <laughs> uh, why not here? That's the good question. Who said that? You're going to get a prize. Actually, it should be uh, part of your complete development process. Let me give you an example. If you start creating your prototype, and we use Spin, so we, uh, we invite the customer to our place or we're going to the customer, we sit down, we create a first sketch of a prototype, then I go back with the, and talk with developers, they create an early version of one of the uh, functionalities, and they can test it, and then I sit down with the customer again and we elaborate on uh, the product and I change my prototype because maybe a customer says, yeah, but I do want to share to Twitter or Facebook. So instead of waiting till the end product and then think maybe my prototype wasn't good because my application wasn't good, try to evolve your prototype during your development process as you do with your normal code except when you're a loner and you just create an open source library, probably it, it, it isn't important. So let's start by creating a prototype. And the first thing we do is plan. Who knows what user stories aren't? And don't be afraid to raise your hand. Who actually knows what user stories is? So somewhere in the middle of people doing this and doing this, there's a, basically, if you sit down with your customer and the customer is the guy in the middle, you listen to what he has to say and you will ask the basic question. So what does, what does the application needs to be doing? And it sounds an easy question. Again, it's not. Because most of the customers say, oh, I just want an app or I just want uh, to know where I need to travel. But basically, you de let the customer, and you need to help him, define the user story. So basically, a definition of the most smallest function the application should be doing. And let me give you some examples. 
So if you create an application that, that the customer says, I need to, to um, know where I am on a map, I need to share my location. These are the user stories that you need to define to translate into your prototype. If there's any questions, just shout or... And, uh, yeah. So you have defined your user stories. Then you need to create some user flow diagrams. This gives you a good idea of the interaction between the different user stories. So again, it's a more visualized way of creating your prototype. And we're still not doing anything. And then comes the cool part. We create some rough interfaces. The reason why you create some rough interfaces with, for instance, a piece of paper, this gives you a good understanding on how many um, pages there, the application should be showing. So you know probably how much it's going to take in terms of money and time to create the application. Then it's time to build it. Oh, I love this. So there are a couple of things you can use. Uh, by the way, these are all my opinion. And if you do have a different opinion, good for you. Keep them because I'm just a average user that feels that as long as you do something with prototyping, you're awesome. So you can buy a UI stencil. They're rarely cheap. And you can create some nifty screens. But imagine um, you creating a screen and in, in almost in the end, and you will be busy for half an hour, you decide, no, nope, the button should be going on the right. You have to do it all over again. So the advantage is you have a high fidelity, but it's really time consuming. Um, what you may use is some more interaction with the screens. Actually, this is a video of one of the guys that created uh, Expedia, and he wanted to actually show a customer the interaction within the application. So he, he sketched up a, 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 on, on a piece of paper a bunch of screens and he went nuts with scissors and ended up with this. So for me it's rather cool. I can see more interaction. I can see what happens when a, a user is clicking on a button. Now imagine you have like 50 pages. How many buttons? I'm not really that handy with the scissors. And again, it's really time consuming, but actually it gives you a more feel of the interaction. So if you're happy doing this, use it as long as you do something. And then there is the templates. You can buy some awesome templates out there. You even have some free ones as well. Yesterday evening, uh, a guy from Singapore uh, just gave us a new version of the Android templates and most of the designers know uh, Photoshop. And the license is really bad and if you actually need to learn Photoshop, it's even worse. But if you're handy and you know the tool, use it. Don't be afraid. It is a good option. And what we use, and that's why I, I'm not a, a, a spokesperson of Kinotopia, I'm just telling you my perspective. I just want something that is easy and fast to do, and it should be cheap. So we just bought, like for 50 uh, bucks, a complete library that, is, uh, that can be used with PowerPoint or Keynote. And I know Keynote. I even know PowerPoint. And it's just a library with components, which I can drag into a presentation, which basically gives you the visualization of an actual application. But what is cool is I can add functionality. I can do a hyperlink to a button to a different screen. And then I extract that presentation as a clickable PDF. And you can, for one buck, you can buy software for your iPad and for your iPhone, and you can actually run the prototype on a phone. 
So what we now have is not only the visualization, but actually a sort of application which we can use uh, as a demonstration, but give to the customer and say, go on, go on, have a try. He can click. So one of the reasons why this is important, because let's say I have a button and I designed it to be very small. And during uh, the run with Kinotopia and I run it on a device, I actually found out the button is too small for my thumb. And I don't have a big thumb, but uh, it, the button was too small. So for me, it gives me extra feedback. I can test my prototype. So let me give you an example. We created, and I'm sorry, it's an, an iPad. The Android version is still in the final production phase. But I do have a better uh, function you can test. This is a uh, presentation we made with Kinotopia, exported it and run it on an actual iPad. And again, it's a prototype. No, everybody's quiet. So please tell me this looks like a sort of finished product. Yeah. And you're probably wondering, okay, um, I, I, most of the question I get for, from, from this video. So I have con uh, uh, customers and not all are very um, bright. And they, we show, we make a clickable uh, prototype and the customer says, cool, now all you have to build it, like in a week and it's finished because it's already running. No, it is a prototype and it should still be a prototype, but it gives you high fidelity, good interaction and a good response, hopefully from the customer saying his user stories are good translated into the prototype. Uh, also, there's the possibility of using stuff in the cloud. For instance, if I create a prototype for you, I'm not traveling to Poland uh, every weekend, but my customer do want a prototype. So we share our prototype using uh, cloud tools. And there are a couple of good ones out there. Again, they will cost you, but you can easily share your prototype. And actually, they can run on the devices and uh, in your web browser even. So, and these are just a couple. There are uh, uh, huge out there. Most of the iOS guys, the, they know Balsamic. If it's good for you, use it. Uh, iOS ha even, even have storyboards. Uh, I'm not a big fan of that, but you can use it. For Android, there are numerous ones. And as long as you know what you want, and if you want to work with Photoshop, you know the knowledge, use it. But have a try with all these kind of tools and see what you think will best fit your needs. So then we have some tests. Well, what do I mean with tests? You should, if you make prototypes, create several ones. Try to interpret the different user stories from different angles. But be true to your user story. So for instance, it should hold the liquid but try different marks to see what's, what's good for the customer. Choose the right user. Feedback is good. Don't be afraid of feedback. But it's important to listen to the right user. <coughs> so if I make an, a business application, mobile application, and my mother says, oh, well, I don't understand it, it's good feedback, but she will probably not use it anyway. Refine. If you do have the time, discuss your uh, mock-ups with the customer several times. Don't be afraid to explain or to ask the consumer what the customer what he thinks, or maybe invite the consumers as well. And if you discuss those results, put them back in your, to your prototype. So refine, make your prototype even better. Let it grow. That's why it's it's important throughout the whole development process to use prototypes and to let the prototype evolve to something beautiful. 
and then repeat the cycle again. Try to test it, refine it again, discuss the results, uh, change it again until basically either you run out of money or the customer is happy. And hopefully those two are really good combined. Then, share. Don't be afraid to share your prototype. It is in the finished product and you don't have to be scared if there's... Uh, you don't have to share the complete prototype, maybe some screens, but go out and, and share it. Like this boy, I find it so sad. His brother won't give him the drink. And most of all, just play with it. Give it to somebody and, and play, with your, play with the prototype. See, see if it fits your need, needs, if, if it's a good design. Don't be, don't be afraid for feedback. So let me sum up what I just tried to discuss. So if you create a prototype, first start with planning. Define your user stories. Um, try to make some rough sketches. Uh, uh, de determine the user flow. Then go out and build the application. Use whatever you tools you prefer. But as long as you build some uh, awesome and you maintain the four steps, quick, cheap, easy and testable. Uh, then test. Don't be afraid to test with the different kind of users, but always be true to the user you're targeting. And refine your prototype. Make, make a couple. Try to, to figure out what, what best. And uh, as long as you're proud of what you're doing, you probably want to share it as well. Well, um, you have a lot of presentations uh, still out there that, and there are comfortable seats. You probably will forget half my presentation. But do remember this. A picture is worth a thousand words, but a prototype is worth a thousand pictures. As long as you remember that, I'm happy. And actually, we have ten minutes. Either I can do a question or I can show you a clip of live prototyping. Ooh. Or maybe we can do both. Are there any questions? Yeah. Uh, you mentioned the Kinotopia, and I'm wondering if there is a possibility uh, to create uh, your own uh, like contours, uh, casting ones. Yeah. And I know there should be some uh, basic ones, and uh, we can create them using those. But uh, if you want to create a more a custom, like graphical. Uh, so your question is, am I bound to just the library of Kinotopia or can I create my own? It's just, a Kinotopia is just a library which you can include. So basically it's just a stack of components. Nothing is holding you back to create awesome components or even design uh, some cool stuff in PowerPoint or Keynote. Actually, Keyn a Keynote is really powerful, especially for Retina, and the processing time is really good. So even though you don't have Keynotopia, you can actually still make your prototype in Keynote or PowerPoint. Yeah? What's your experience about uh, developing, preparing prototypes for various size, uh, screen sizes and orientations? Um, it depends on what you want to test with your prototype. If you're testing the different kind of functionality, if let's say there's a, you've got a tablet version and you've got a smartphone version, you do need to create both prototypes. But actually, you're not testing the scalability of your application. It's user experience is just creating the flow of the application, how the application is feeling. Uh, so if it runs on a small or big device, as long as it's the same, for a user experience, it, it, it doesn't matter. As a programmer, it does, but as a designer, it doesn't. Yeah. Or three if you're uh, focusing on Google Glass, or four if you're using uh, Android TV or Google TV. Or so, just shall we just show the movie? Yeah. Okay. Let me explain something. Well, I'm, I'm doing this talk very often, I don't know why, but it seems to be popular and it's one of the last, last, last talks I'll be doing this year. I have two more. 
And um, I was in Ankara for the Android Developer Days, and we were driving from Ankara to Istanbul in the morning. And I, we had too much to drink. And the driver uh, was a good friend, and he was driving 200 kilometers per hour in a car in the morning. And we decided, we were bored, we need to do something. There was an American, a German, me, and uh, the driver and his wife in the car. So what can we do? Well, we decided to... Oh, my... Sh yeah. Decided to uh, prototype an awesome game called Point while driving. Again, 200 kilometers per hour. We're not stopping because we were on a tight schedule. And all we had in the car was a pen and piece of paper. We had a camera because we wanted to video our game. And we have had this guy. So how can we create an awesome game? Well, actually, we needed to have something that shows the score. We needed, actually, the sliding devices. Uh, of course, we're using the Android as object that is going from left to right. But we thought maybe there al should also be sound effects. So, how is live prototyping done in the real world? Oh, should I break it again? No, we're not, we're not done, we're not done. No, 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 it's getting, it's, it's even worse. But one thing is we see, actually we see feedback because we have a store, it, it says winning. We have a good design because we see the game. Uh, we have some additional sound effects so we know how to play the game. And we had just fun, so let's continue the movie. I don't know why it still stops. Oh, oh, wait a minute, it's the other. Ah, uh, let me do this. It's playing again, I will. And at the second game, I was basically losing it because the sound effect for me at sometimes felt like he was saying boobies. And we're trying so seriously to actually play the game. Again, the car is doing 200. We're almost there. I'm trying so seriously to game. And there I lose it. I know. Uh, actually, at the end of the game, there was a stack overflow. Uh, let me pull out the slides, because that's it. Why isn't it working? Yeah, you can clap. <laughs>